Hey everyone, Christian here, and I want to do a review on just doing a coconut, a Cocos nucifera. Coconuts are a monotypic genus, and they, uh, meaning they have only one species in the genus, and they are been found everywhere for hundreds or centuries, if not millennia. But where they originally come from is uh, a little bit of a mystery, but scientists believe that they originated in the Western Pacific area, so like the Philippines. Um, Indonesia, you know, like Vietnam, sort of that area, Southeast Asia, that little triangle there, and parts of Oceania, which uh, are, you know, seems highly likely. They seem to be kind of brought from the uh, the east over to the west to areas like Brazil, uh, the Caribbean, and um, just really uh, kind of have become such a staple of life in the tropics. So many parts of the coconut are not only is it so ideal, you know, such a symbol of the tropics for those who vacation there, but it is so uh, important to people who live there uh, the the aspects of the tree that can be used. So, like I said, coconut Cocos nucifera is a monotypic genus, only one species in the genus. Although there were others in the genus, and they kind of put them, they moved them away, such as uh, the queen palm used to be Cocos plumosa, but this was 50 years ago before they had a lot of uh, DNA work done on it. So, uh, on the coconut itself, this is basically what I just call a green Malayan, um, meaning its, its origin is probably from Malaysia. It's green, it doesn't have any other real notable uh, features on it. It just has a green petiole and a green rachis, and the leaves do twist, twist here at the end. And, uh, you know, other types will have different features, but this one, this one seems to have all the features of a green Malayan. But getting to the parts of the coconut that are useful, uh, we'll start from the, the bottom. So a lot of times coconut trunks are used for shelter. You can build housing out of them. You can't really see the trunk, but there it is. And I probably should have gone around to the back side of this, but uh, you guys you know, probably have a good idea of what the trunk looks like seeing so many of them in, in pictures. And you can see the, the, the top of the trunk to the crown here. But um, especially, you know, coconuts don't usually grow straight, but you could, they can be you know, properly used to make shelter, the trunk of the coconut. And as, as well, the leaves are used for thatching. I mean, I have a, I have a, uh, a little fedora hat made out of uh, coconut uh, palm leaflets. And uh, it's, it still uh, works well today as it did uh, 12 years ago or 13 years ago when I got it. And so, yeah, it's amazing how, how well they stand up to everything, including you know, wind, water, a lot of times, like the big tsunami in Indonesia in 2004, one of the few things you'll see left in the landscape are coconut palms, even if they are kind of all blown apart, they're still alive. And, uh, you know, the most important part of the coconut, though, is in fact the seeds, which are coconuts. And these are in various stages of uh, development. They usually take about nine months to a year to develop, uh, depending on the size of the coconut. And um, they are harvested at different times. If you're trying to grow another, trying to grow a coconut palm from an existing coconut, you want to wait until that coconut has turned brown and preferably fallen from the tree. Um, ones that haven't fallen from the tree are less likely to be mature, have mature embryos inside. So uh, when you try and knock them off a, a tree, look for the ones that are already kind of brown sitting there, and they will be the most likely candidates for a uh, coconut palm seedling. Now the un, the unripened ones, the softer, the green ones there that are not turned brown, are often used to, for coconut uh, water, as you you can often uh, find them for sale to drink uh, in the tropics, or <clears throat> you can buy you can get coconut um, coconut water in cans at <clears throat> excuse me at grocery stores in all around the world, and inside the uh, besides the water, there's also the copra, which is a coconut meat. And that can be ground up. It can be eaten in chunks, and it has a. It's, it is very fatty, but um, is you know been eaten by so many different cultures that I couldn't even begin to name them all. Uh, but you know, it's used in everything from Thai cooking, like uh, coconut curries. Coconut milk is a base to to pretty much all of those curries. Uh, coconut milk is used in other things, such as or coconut cream is used in a lot of drinks, like pina coladas. And uh, yeah, it's just in general, you know, it has a lot of nutrition to it and you could basically live off coconuts if you had to. I wouldn't, I would say you don't want to be like uh, Tom Hanks in Castaway where you kind of get tired of coconuts after a while and, you know, you'll start to, to dislike it. But I have loved coconuts since as long as I can remember as far as the taste goes. I eat coconut cake. I like eating coconut desserts. 
uh, you know, pretty much everything coconut I will eat. And uh, I hope that I feel bad for those that don't like the taste of it. And I mean, it's not it's something you can really change, but it is um, it is quite uh, a tasty uh, fruit. So, um, yeah, I mean, you can also eat the heart of the coconut, but it involves chopping down the palm and killing it. It's one of those things where if it, you know, coconut's going to be, you know, if it's been blown over in a hurricane and can't be, uh, you know, righted or properly planted again, you can uh, cut out the heart and eat it like a heart of palm. It, it's, it, it, as far as hearts of palm goes, it doesn't taste amazing, but it's not that bad. Uh, you know, it just kind of tastes like a little bit of more of a bitter artichoke. So, um, the other parts of the palm, the fiber here is also used to kind of like, uh, shim and put things like w when you're building something, it, it, it adds a little bit of, uh, you know, texture and gets in like, like those nooks and crannies that maybe, uh, the trunks can, you know, make over time when they're, you know, they're not perfectly shaped. So you can, these are kind of like a fill in thing. And this is mostly in the tropics where it's just going to be sheltered from the sun. Uh, you're not trying to, you know, really insulate the, you know, what you're building, but it is still important to kind of have an intact building, but y you can still use it for other methods. Anything that would be using a fiber and maybe filtering. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, the coconut itself can be shelter. If you live, you can live underneath the coconut palms, but I mean, I'm kind of grabbing at things here, but it's, uh, you know, it's such an idyllic palm that, uh, I really felt like I kind of missed the making a vlog about just a coconut. Um, talking about where coconuts will grow, um, coconuts require really a minimum a minimum mean temperature every year, uh, basically the same as a tropical climate does, or according to the Koppen climate classification. So that means 64, 64.4 uh, Fahrenheit has to be your mean temperature for every month out of the year. So right around here, we're right around 64 and a half uh, Fahrenheit for their coldest month of, I believe it's either January or February. And they do very well here. If you go about 50 miles north, they start to not do so well. And they will, uh, uh, they will, not, uh, they will sometimes die in cold snaps. And further north, it, they are less hardy and they're more of a, an annual or a, they'll grow for a few years and then, uh, then die. So, um, you know, they require a decent amount of humidity which is great here in in florida because we have plenty of it they don't do they people try and grow them in places like dubai where there is plenty of heat and there's not a it, it isn't too cold for them but the humidity level is so low during the uh, winter months that they often have to spray water onto them and they have high winds too that those the, the speedy dry winds will uh turn coconuts brown they won't kill them it just makes them look kind of rough so some climates don't have uh, quite the heat to produce coconuts, but the palm itself will do fine. So a good example of this is Bermuda. Bermuda doesn't get that cold, but it doesn't get that warm either. It kind of stays in the, in the wintertime, like throughout the 60, 60 to 70 Fahrenheit range. And it's not quite enough heat to produce viable coconuts. It's very rare to get viable coconuts out of Bermuda from what I am told. I've only been to Bermuda once, I was two years old, and I don't remember exactly. So, um, but it is not crown shafted. It is probably one of the prettiest non-crown shafted pinnate palms, in my opinion. I don't care how many are around and how many I've seen growing everywhere. You know, it is, you can, it's so recognizable and beautiful. And they get even prettier as more, more colors are emerged, especially when you have yellow. There's yellow spicata, red spicata, and you have yellow and red uh, coconuts and yellow and red petioles. Um, and so... You know, you can collect all the different varieties of coconuts if you have the room in your garden. So, um, as far as uh, germinating them, you know, the coconuts are going to be a little bit larger than these here, but they're going to, the shape is going to uh, vary quite a bit on these. They are, uh, they can be perfectly, almost perfectly round to almost looking like a football. And anywhere in between, they can kind of have some indentations in them, or they can be very smooth. Um, it's kind of, it kind of just depends on the variety. And uh, yeah, there's really no rhyme or reason about it. So um, I'm gonna go over to the trunk and kind of show you guys the base and how the coconut does kind of hold on to the, to the, uh, the hold its roots into the ground. So hold on one second here. Okay, so here we are at the base here. You can see down here is a canal. It's pretty, it's actually fairly low. It was even lower before our rains these past few days. 
but these uh you know the, these you'll often see coconuts growing along the beach but not inland and often it's just because coconuts tend to just grow along the beach and they don't grow inland either in the mountains because they don't um coconuts don't travel very well as far as like through elevation where birds birds can't carry coconuts as well known in uh, the monty python movie uh the search for the holy grail i believe it is so they discuss how two birds if they could carry one coconut um which i think is a hilarious movie but that's that's neither here nor there but you can see here that the root ball kind of was was kind of in this area here and then it kind of tipped and so the mounding kind of it kind of came up a little bit but this is all going to be solid roots and this area is holding up this entire palm you can see going up the trunk here through the bananas and always going to be searching for sun that's why you'll see coconuts always be um they'll always be curved along the beach kind of or wherever they can look for sun really so they'll curve around buildings they'll curve around other plants um, just anything that kind of gets in the way of them getting into the sun they are definitely full sun palms they don't like being in the shade when they're in the shade they look kind of they just look kind of uh, leggy and just not very not nearly as good as when they're in the sun so um, they will won't produce coconuts very well in the shade either but you can see here it's very fat at the base is a very healthy coconut and they're actually easily climbable at this stage I could probably I'm not even a good climber but I could probably get most of the way up that crown no problem and uh, yeah, and you know, people will climb these, you know, those professional coconut climbers, that's a profession to cut down coconuts or do whatever, you know, to trim them up. And uh, yeah, you know, they, they really are amazing plants, you know, with the ability to kind of, you can see all the way down here, these roots, you know, all rip, grabbing into the ground, holding on, uh, you know, almost like they're on the side of a cliff and they're just like, no, we're not going to, we're not leaving anytime soon. So uh, they're great for for planting in hurricane prone areas so there's actually a couple uh calm i mean a couple trays of uh of uh <clears throat> teddy bears that just left a kilos um in the way here but they're they're sitting on the mound as well so anyway i wanted to make a longer vlog about coconuts because i felt like it is such an important palm in the world not only in landscape but you know in ornamental use but for uh, actual uh personal use for the for the products that it can offer the coconut oil as well for cooking um so I may have, I'm sure I've missed a number of uses of the coconut, but those are the kind of the ones I've kind of come off the top of my head. And this is kind of like my vlog on the coconut that I haven't really done before. I've just kind of done how coconuts grow, you know, what varieties of coconuts and uh, kind of how to germinate. So hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe and you'll see many more palm reviews like this. If you have any questions about coconuts, leave them down below and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. And I'll see everyone next time. Thanks for watching.